All right, Project Moongold family, smash that like button, guys. Smash that subscribe button. We got the hits on the channel. The club is absolutely bumping. We're putting out content, content, content like a harpy. August is a real good month for crypto and trading. Turn the notification bell so you get the breakouts when they happen and the videos right when they launch. Follow the telegram t.me slash club moongold. And do your own research. You're not playing with Monopoly money, but real hard-earned money. So, guys, I'm doing a Fibonacci video on the Project Moon Gold channel today, a bit of TA. But I'm not doing myself. My partner with PMG TA Guru, Joji, you guys know him as, is explaining it. He's going to explain the Fibonacci in detail and why I do it a different way when we're bullish than when we're bearish. You should understand the difference between a low, high, lower, low, and higher, high, and how to know when to take profit on the Fib. We'll do other videos on the Fib, but this is just a video explaining the Fibonacci for crypto and people beginner to TA. Not even be beginner to TA, guys. The Fib is life literally life our body our, our our soul basically our world is the fibonacci uh there's a video you'll understand if you watch fibonacci in the world today but anyways smash the like button guys smash the subscribe button uh put your comments in the comment section below pump it up for joji because i've been telling him do this for a while and he finally did it so i appreciate all your support guys you are gold we are all gold lfg let's go Hello fam, so uh, Jask asked me to uh, create a quick tutorial on how to use the fib. So I'm going to show you guys um, how I use the fib as well as when to use it. And I guess show you some of my settings and why I use it a certain way. So let's find a clean chart here. Now let's just use Cardano for example. So here's the clean chart of Cardano. Uh, something to remember when using a fib is that you have to have a trend, right? So for example, we have to have an uptrend and a trend normally consists of four points. So what I mean about four points is that you have to have a low, a high, a higher low, as well as a higher high. So that's a trend. So uh, you, you have to make sure it consists of four points, right? So this is not a trend. So you have your low, your high, your high or low, and you don't have that higher high. So that is not a trend. So when you're looking at a, a trend and uh, you want to use the fib, something that you have to look for is, um, the way I look at it is, what created this last part or what created this scenario right so which trend line created that scenario so this trend line right here created this scenario so this point right here would be a good place to start my fib right so i'm gonna find the low and i'm gonna find my my high okay now, for you to use the, the the fib, you actually have to break the 0 0.26 trend line right here. So as soon as you break it, then it's okay to use the fib. If you haven't broken that yet, then really it's kind of pointless to use the fib at that point because you're trying to measure how far down it's going to retrace. Now, there's a couple of things that I use to kind of figure out how far it's actually going to go down is it going to go down to the 382 the 0 0.5 and the 618 so actually those three numbers are right there they're your key numbers right this is normally how far it goes down now i normally look at previous trends uh, to kind of predict how far it's going to go back down as well so for example uh, if i look at the previous trend line like this line right here so let's just create a fib from here to there. So you guys could see it went back down to the 0 0.382. So I'm going to assume it's going to go back down around that area as well on this trend line. And if you keep looking back, normally you'll get a better idea on how far it'll normally go back down. 
Uh, something that you could use as well is you guys probably noticed this uh, because we've been talking about BTC a lot is that uh, the faster it, the faster the faster things goes up the fa the, the, the faster it'll go down as well right uh, it's the same thing as when using the fib so if this goes up pretty quickly most likely it's going to go down a little bit lower if it goes up gradually then most likely you're going to be in that 0 0.382 uh, depending on the speed of how fast it's trending up it's also probably going to go retrace back down uh, around that speed so if it's going really fast most likely it's going to go to the 618 if it's going pretty slow then most likely it's just going to go to the 0 0.382 right now uh, this critical zone right here, uh, I have um, the, the 786 as well as the 886. If we pass this area right here, normally uh, if we tr keeps trending down, for example, if we're tracing down, if we pass that, what we normally have to do is use the bigger fib. So we have to kind of zoom out and then create the fib from here to there to give us a better picture. Because right now we're only trying to predict this trend line right here on where it's going to take us and so forth right now I'm just going to show you my settings and I'm going to show you guys why I actually use it a little bit different than this way so the first thing you have to look at is your log scale okay so I have this set on log uh, the log scale so you want to make sure if you have uh, you also change your settings in your fib to be on log scale as well Okay, now I've also added uh, 0 0.886 because normally the 0 0.886 and the 786 is my critical zone. Okay, and, and I also have it set on reverse. Okay, the reason I have it set on reverse is because the last year we've been really bullish. And what normally what we're looking at is normally where our buy zones are, our critical zones, our resistance zones, as well as our take profit zones. So I didn't want to have to keep flipping it uh, the other way each time. So, but if you kind of look at it anyways, it really doesn't really make a difference. I just look at this line as how far it goes down. I don't really look at the numbers anyways, but the numbers are very identical. Uh, so let me just tell you exact show you exactly what I mean so if you kind of look at it this way right so this is the default what I'm doing right now this is the the scale from 0 to 1 but I like to use it the other way because I want to measure my take profit zone so if you kind of look at where the 382 your 5 as well as your 618 and 382 they're actually the same the same lines right and those are the lines that I normally use as my support or buy zones anyways so if I'm kinda looking to if this is like a starting to trend downwards I wanna make sure uh, I, I look for my level of support, right? So let's just say this is my level of support. If I break through that, normally I have my stop loss, and if it breaks through that, this is my my last zone of defense, like this area right here. And if it breaks through that, like, like what I said, I have to zoom out. But I don't really look at the numbers, anyways. I kind of look at they're exactly the same thing, uh, or where they are, and if you have it in reverse or not. So. I normally have mine set on reverse because those lines are the same lines as those ones anyways right so by having it in reverse then I don't have to keep changing my fib so by having it this way I know I could retrace back based on the previous it could retrace back to the 618 um, or depending on how fast it's going it might drop down to the 0.5 or the 382. Now, I did add, like I said, the 886 because that's my critical zone. Uh, and normally, after I create my fib, those are the first 
things I normally put in there. Right, this is my critical zones. Alright, just to kind of show you guys. Yeah. So those are my critical zones. Um, this is where we have a lot of people selling because as soon as they hit that ATH, what's going to happen is a lot of people like to take profit, right? And people start to sell off. And normally what happens in this critical zone is this is where we accumulate a little bit before we break out and actually break that ATH right after. And of course, right? Uh, normally, depending on the speed or which way this is going, normally around the 618 right here or 0.5, this normally would be my buy zone, right? Or depending, like I said, depending on what you how how you're looking at this, your buy zone could be this area. Depending on how fast it went up, it might be going down this and, and touching all the way to here, right? And then, of course, our take profit zones would be just before the 618. So if you're looking at Cardano right now, I'm just going to look at my templates that I set up. All right, so that'll be my take profit zone. My ATH would be around right here. For, for this trend right here. So basically right now, this buy zone is actually going to be in this area based on what's happening. Uh, and my take profit would be there, right? So right now, uh, looking at Cardano, you know what, we're accumulating around this area. If we do drop down to, yeah, I guess to, to the $2, uh, this would be a good buy, right? And most likely, as you guys could see, it tries, you know, it made a first attempt to kind of break this critical zone, went back down. Again, it's using the, the bottom one as support, and now it's about to go up again. Hopefully, it does break it. it you know, it tested once, actually, it tested once, it tested twice, and hopefully, it breaks it. Uh, and then we'll get to the ATH and then move up from there. Uh, ne next, take proper zone for Cardano. We're looking at around six, six, uh, 260 to uh, 270. That's basically a quick way to use the FIB. Um, again, like I said, I like to use it this way. I have it set on reverse uh, just for that reason alone because the 618, the, the 0 0.5, and the 0 0382, uh, they don't really matter anyways. You could reverse it. It's the same lines. Um, Besides that, if you guys have any questions, definitely, you know what, uh, I'll be around. Just, just give me a quick shout, and uh, I'll be happy to answer some of your questions.